fourth word. Matthew chapter 27, verses 45 through 46. I am presiding elder Earl J. Griffin, Sr., president of the Connectional Presiding Elders Council, presiding elder of the Monroe District, Louisiana Region, 4th Episcopal District, and pastor of the Lewis Temple Christian Methodist Episcopal Church in Grambling, Louisiana. I want to thank Bishop J.B. Walker and his lovely wife for this invitation to come before you with the word from the Lord. Let us hear the reading of God's word. From noon to three, the whole earth was dark. Around mid-afternoon, Jesus groaned out of the depths, crying loudly, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Matthew says that darkness covered the entire earth, not just Jerusalem, not just uh, Golgotha's hill, but darkness covered the entire earth for three solid hours. No one could see anything. The only thing that could be heard was the groans of Jesus and the other two who were hanging on the tree with him. And in this text in Matthew, darkness represents the fact that evil, sin, and death were present at the cross. How could that be since the light of the world was indeed hanging between the two thieves. This darkness as well as being thick was dank, musty, and stinking. It is a type of darkness that would make your skin crawl and the hair curl up on your neck. This darkness would produce an eerie feeling like the presence of evil was there. And indeed, if you were there that day, you would have been correct for evil, sin, and death were indeed at the cross. This type of darkness was darkness that had never been experienced before. And for three debilitating hours, darkness seemed to triumph over the Son of Man, the light of the world, the Messiah, Jesus the Christ. Evil that was present in the form of Satan lurking in the darkness with his yellow teeth and snarling growl that chill the hearts of all who stumbled around in the dark. Yes, Satan dwelt in the hearts of those who yelled, crucify him, crucify him. Yes, he mocked Jesus. He used the people to spit on him, to try to humiliate him and to shame him into taking action against the crucifixion, which was his destiny. But not only was Satan there trying to provoke Jesus, sin was, always, was also there. For 2 Corinthians 5 and 21 declares, for he that knew no sin became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God by faith in him. Jesus, you see, as he was hanging on the cross, took upon himself the sins of the whole world. And as he took upon him those sins, the atmosphere got darker and darker. You recall that Isaiah declared in chapter 59, he said, behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Isaiah reminds us that sin kept God from looking at Jesus, kept God separated from Jesus. God had to look away. Sin kept God from speaking to Jesus. Sin kept God's presence far from Jesus seemingly. For the first time in his life, Jesus suffered the penalty for sin. He realized and understood what it meant to be without God on your side. Beloved, evil and sin were indeed at the cross, but lest we think 
They were the only two. Let me remind you that death was there. Death lurks in the shadows. Death comes in the darkness of faith. Death comes to claim those who have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And death came to claim the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Death came in payment for a sin-filled world for the transgressions against God. Death was at the cross to claim payment for what you and I had done, for truly Jesus was innocent. Jesus was on the verge of victory, but suffering and confusion became his lot. Let us look at how Jesus bore our sins. When every mental condition attacked his mind, he became confused and delirious. He talked like he was demented and possessed by the devil. When every lie that could be told was consumed in his body, when every adulterous affair that would ever be committed had its penalty placed upon Jesus, he felt the hurt, humiliation, and harm of every victim of these selfish acts. Jesus felt the pain of sin, the effects of lying, cheating, murdering, stealing, and blaspheming. He felt the agony of slander, tail-bearing, gossip, and being misunderstood. Yes, Jesus was at the point where even his disciples had abandoned him, where even his, his disciples had betrayed him. Jesus was left alone to hang on the cross. And since God's presence could not be felt, Jesus cried out to his father, why have you forsaken me? That's a word for somebody today. When you're going through a dark tunnel of life, when you're going through challenges in life and you feel abandoned by God, you need to know that there are certain times that God looks the other way, but he does not move away. Hallelujah. It has well been said that the world is darkest uh, just before the dawn and Jesus is here. And I believe that he is there uh, in his feelings as a human being saying, I feel so all alone. But beloved, don't panic because there is good news. You know that good news is coming in just a few days. You know that God will never leave you nor forsake you. But there are times when you feel the challenge of feeling abandoned and left alone. When you feel abandoned by God, don't walk away in frustration and give up the fight and walk away from your destiny. When you can't hear God say a mumbling word, hang right in there, stay in your position, stay on your post, do what God has called you to do because God will show up and show out. Somebody said, I can't preach about it today. I just got to talk about when you feel abandoned, but when you trust the God who saved you and trust in the God who anointed you, when you get to carry your cross, just trust the God who says, I know the plans I have for you, plans of a future filled with hope. When you feel abandoned by God, just be quiet and rest in that blessed assurance that God is who God says God is and that your redemption will draw closer and closer and closer. Beloved, there's a lot more word. I just don't have the time. I want to tell you today that when you feel abandoned by God, that's the time to activate your faith because sin, evil, and death may be pressing you, but you serve a God who's already been through that who's already walked that road, who knows the way, who is the way, and who will deliver you right on time. Blessed be the word of God for the people of God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.